Hey guys, uh, it's Paul here from the Mage Cloud, and I want to welcome you once again for the business chat. And we have right now uh, Jack Lane, the founder of the Bikeberry.com, and some other businesses as well. Uh, we are working with him for quite a lot of time, and he was uh, so so much in the business. Uh, I know quite a lot about the e-commerce from his side as well. So, uh, Jack, thank you for taking your time and uh, and be our guest for for today. Yeah, of course. Happy to be here. So, uh, like this conversation will be mostly for like our like uh, uh, potential new clients or the clients that want to start the business. So, can you can you start a little bit more about like how did you start this bike barrier things? Uh, you know, what was like the foundation uh, and how how did you get from zero to let's say fifty k a month? <laughs> Yeah, our, I mean, our story is actually quite interesting in that, you know, we've been around for a really, really long time. We've done, I mean, shoot, I, we, we say we started in 2007, but I actually started a little bit earlier. Um, started while I was still in college, actually. I studied mechanical engineering um, in college, and pretty early on, I knew that I, that's not something that I wanted to do, right? So, you know, we were, I was studying it. You know, I was kind of knee deep in the in the major and, you know, I realized early on, like, hey, this really isn't something that is, I'm that passionate about. And then so I, I think I was still in the dorms. I started selling things and a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs have the same story in, in e-commerce space where they start out on eBay. Right. So um, I started out very early on as a dropship only business. So we had gone to a trade show. I found a manufacturer, a local manufacturer that would drop ship bicycles for us. And then so, um, yeah, that's kind of how it started. It started out on eBay um, while I was still in school. And, you know, when we graduated, um, while all my other friends were looking for jobs and whatnot, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to keep doing this. <laughs> and so that's kind of how it started. Um, in terms of the bike, so that, that's the bicycles is where we started. We've kind of morphed now into more into the motorized bicycle niche. So the gas bicycles and the electric bicycles. And, you know, the story on that is we're doing bicycles. Um, I recall distinctly there was one week in particular where one customer had called us and said, hey, does this particular bike uh, fit a gas engine kit, right? And initially I was like, I, I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. I've never heard of these gas engine kits um, before in my life. And so, you know, I looked into it briefly, um, but I didn't think too much into it. I think that same week, another customer had called, asked the exact same question, right? So, um, so that's kind of when I, it piqued my interest and I was like, wow, that's, that's two in one week. Um, you know, same, same answer. You know, I told them, I think, I think so. We're not sure we're not, um, in the motorized bicycle space, but you know, I'll certainly look into it and let you know, right. Same week, third call, uh, third customer calls in exact same question. Um, and so that was when it really hit a tipping point in the sense that I was like, wow, that's, that's three in a row, same week. Um, definitely should look into this. And so, you know, we looked into that, look, it seemed like a very, very interesting niche for us. And so, um, that's kind of how the motorized bike, um, portion of the business started. Now, you know, we've been into, been it for, you know, where the, where the, I believe the largest one in the industry now, 13 years now, um, that we've been into it. Um, and that's where we started out in motorized bikes. And since then, we've gone into electrics, which is really big um, in the last couple of uh, years. And so, you know, we started doing the electric bike kits that convert bikes into um, electric bikes. And then now we're full on into the electric bike category. But yeah, that's how so, we started. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay. So as of now, uh, basically as an e-commerce website originally you started with ebay can you share a little bit more how the how do you structure right now uh like this the website do you still maintain your ebay amazon like any other marketplaces uh what's what do you have on uh, like uh on the day-by-day -day things uh, with the e-commerce store how many people 
you know, do you have your own battery house and stuff like that? Sure, sure, yeah. Um, we have our own warehouse in Brea, um, Brea, California, which is outside of LA, um, as well as we work with this large 3PL, so we're shipping out of multiple warehouse locations, one on the West Coast that we control ourselves and then on the East Coast as well. Um, in terms of staffing, we have, uh, I think about 22 people now. And so, you know, we've, we've definitely grown over the years in terms of, you know, how everything works. Um, where right now on Magento, as you're very well aware, um, Magento one is end of life. Um, we're currently, you know, contemplating considering the move to either Magento two or Shopify or even, uh, maybe big commerce, but regardless, you know, the Magento 2 and uh, Shopify are the two um, considerations right now. I know you and I have had a couple of conversations about that as well. Um, in terms of marketplaces, our primary focus is definitely our website, right? That's our bread and butter. We're, we put, um, you know, 80% of our focus onto that. Um, but we do as well do a little bit of eBay, a little bit of Amazon, um, you know, those marketplaces very difficult to, you know, kind of look past those, um, huge opportunity there. You know, there's definitely downsides to marketplaces as well. Um, I, I would prefer to control as much as possible. And, you know, when you go into the marketplaces, there's less control, if you will. Right. So, um, we focus because of that, we focus a majority of our time and effort into our website but we do dabble a little bit into eBay, which is our roots, obviously, um, as, uh, as with a lot of people. And um, Amazon now, which is obviously, you know, the Goliath, the, the, big, the big players right now, right? So um, that currently we use M2E Pro, which a lot of Magento folks are using. Um, and then to kind of tie it all together, we use a ERP system um, for our inventory management through the different marketplaces. Um, I'd rather not name the ERP system to be quite honest. I'd, it's not something that I would recommend, that's why. Um, we're currently exploring other options, you know, and ERP, it, it has worked great. Now, you know, it depends on the stage of your business. Um, different ERP systems or inventory management systems are great. For smaller businesses and but as you grow and as there's complexities that are added into the business you start outgrowing those systems right and so we're at that stage now we're looking at a new ERP system um, kind of as we speak um, and then that all ties into um, we use ShipStation we were previously using ShipWorks um, there I think they're one in the same company now but a um, little bit different one's cloud-based one's um, one's locally, um, uh, local uh, systems, but um, it, it all works out for us. It's, you know, as we've grown, our systems have gotten more and more complicated, but um, yeah, that's pretty much um, everything in a nutshell. <laughs> so, so we mentioned that the majority of the sales coming from your personal website, from your own website. Sure, yeah. Uh, how do you drive traffic right now? What's the major channels, if you can name it? Yeah, sure. I mean, we, you know, I've learned early on that you shouldn't rely heavily on one marketing channel, right? So whether that be paid ads or, or SEO or, you know, social or even email, email marketing, affiliate marketing, if you rely too heavily on one particular avenue you there's a lot of risk involved right you and i had to have this conversation um i think sometime last year in which we got hit by one of the google um algorithms updates and so you know if we were heavily reliant on only seo that would have been a pretty big uh, issue for us but thankfully you know we're heavily diversified on purpose we do um you know paid ads, we do SEO, we do, you know, obviously the newsletter marketing, videos, um, blog posts, we, we try to, we're fair, we try to be as fairly active on the blog post, that way we can bring in, you know, kind of informational um, traffic, not as high value, but I think um, 
there is certainly value in that as well. Um, but, you know, recently we signed up for a SMS provider um, called Attentive. And so we're actually in the middle of onboarding with them right now. Um, super excited about uh, Attentive. Um, I think SMS is where email marketing was at, I don't know, 10 years ago. And so um, excited to see where that goes. But um, yeah, to, I don't know the answer to your question. We're, we're kind of, we do it all. We try to do it all. You know, one thing that we, we haven't quite figured out is um, Facebook marketing. Um, you know, a lot of folks are really, really successful with Facebook marketing. Um, we found whether it's because of our niche or we just haven't kind of figured it out, it's, I don't know, it's, uh, we're, we're hopeful that we will um, because it's a marketing channel that's highly lucrative if you can do it properly. What about, I know you, you just started with the email marketing, like more advanced uh, clever system, more advanced uh, steps, etc. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, like the two months ago or something like that, how, how, yeah. how does it, how does it work right now? I mean, do, do you see like improvements? Do you see like a, uh, like a, the plan to, uh, to do more for that, like with this channel? Yeah. So we recently just moved over to, to Clavio. We were with a different, um, email marketing provider before. And I'd say before our email marketing, um, efforts were, pretty basic. Um, you know, we did have some of the flows like the abandoned carts and the abandoned, um, uh, abandoned browser um, flows and whatnot, but our newsletters specifically, we were throwing them out to our entire list, right? So whenever we had an email blast, we would literally blast them to our, um, you know, huge, because our huge list of, of followers. You know, I've learned that long-term, that's a really bad strategy because you know, what's happening is that you're increasing your spam rates. Um, you know, you're not as trusted in with the, um, with the email uh, providers. And so by moving over to Clavio, we're actually, what we're doing is doing the, oh, setting a reset button, right? So, you know, our strategy right now, because we just moved over, like you said, two months ago, um, is to kind of just slowly warm up the account, right? So we're not doing any of the huge email blasts. We're slowly sending them to our most um, active customers, our most um, engaged customers and kind of slowly expanding that out. Um, so right now we're still very early. Um, the results are, you know, obviously the less emails you send out, which is still a great marketing channel, the less revenue you're going to bring in. But you know, we're in it for the long term. So, you know, we're, we're going slow and steady. Um, we'll see how it goes, but I'm, I'm pretty optimistic and pretty excited about, um, our email channels moving forward. You know, we're, we're having this conversation in a tough time in the COVID-19, uh, do you have any like, uh, feedback, how the situation hit your business, uh, any lessons you've learned from, from that situation on, on the business side? Yeah, I mean, obviously a lot of businesses were affected negatively with COVID. You know, we count our blessings, oh, man, uh, daily because we haven't been um, affected. In fact, COVID has resulted in us, you know, kind of having a bit of an explosion in business, to be quite honest. Um, you know, bicycles specifically, um, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of news articles now that it's, it's, uh, the, the TP, the toilet paper of, of today, because now that everybody is locked home at home, all the gyms are closed, you know, people are just trying to get out and, you know, one, be outside of the house. Um, they can't drive anywhere and two, they're trying to get some exercise in, right? So there's been a huge demand in, um, bicycles the last couple of, um, months and weeks and so you know very grateful that that's happened it's been a struggle for sure you know nobody saw it coming i don't think anybody in this in in the industry saw it coming so you know we did have supply chain issues in which a lot of things are going out of stock um we're having a lot of issues with just dealing with the overwhelming 
demand, right? Like you go from, you know, a demand level that's here and then out of nowhere, it just kind of it goes crazy. Very difficult for our team, but, um, you know, thankfully we have a really, really strong team. Um, super grateful for, you know, everyone basically doing a lot of overtime and kind of trying to get through it the best that we can. Um, I know we were supposed to actually do this interview a couple of weeks back, um, a couple of months back, actually. And I just told you, I, I, I'm, I'm way too busy right now, but you know, things are starting to calm down. Um, things are starting to normalize. Um, very interesting. I'm very curious what's really going to happen moving forward. Right. You know, we're going into really unprecedented time. Um, now with e-commerce folks specifically, Maybe it's wishful thinking. I don't know, but um, I think we're in a pretty good position. Um, you know, a lot of things are moving, have been moving online. And so moving forward, especially with COVID and, you know, the social, uh, the, the, the move to kind of socially distance, um, less and less people are going to be wanting to go in store and, um, go online instead right so um yeah i don't know for us we've been really lucky um really grateful and you know consider ourselves um super lucky um moving forward who knows what's going to happen but uh you know hope for the best uh, plan for the worst right so <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true <laughs> so uh if if you look back into the entire the business yeah certain years Mm -hmm. uh, do you recognize any specific like mistakes that you've made or maybe like something like, uh, you know, like over the time you release, well, I mean, I should probably do this a little bit differently. Um, sure. um I don't know. I mean, I'm sure we've made a lot of mistakes. I've made a ton of mistakes. Um, you know, one thing that really stands out, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs have this issue is, um, what do they call it? The, the shiny object syndrome in which, you know, everything is an opportunity, right? And I'm definitely no exception. I've, I've done it countless times. Um, you know, nowadays I'm a little bit more disciplined, but I'm not completely, um, cured of this, this syndrome, if you will, right? Like there's been so many times over the years that you see an opportunity and you just go for it, right? We, we go, oh man, this is, this is, um, this could be huge. And, you know, you, you just go for it and, you know, that's great. That's what makes entrepreneurs great. And what, that's what kind of opens up new opportunities and opens up, um, new, new lines of business, if you will. Right. But what I've learned over the years is really that takes away a lot from your core um, business. Right. And so, you know, whether that be a new line or a new category of business, um, it's, it, it, I've learned over the years that it truly does take away from, you know, your niche. So nowadays, you know, we're there, we realize that like, Hey, our niche is motorized bikes, right? Um, that's what we know. That's what we're experts in. Um, that's what we're going to stick into. So now that we, if, if there are new business opportunities, for example, um, we're less prone to just jump, you know, jump in deep to it. We'll kind of consider, um, consider it really ask us, ask ourselves a question like, Hey, does this fit into our niche before we jump into it? Right. And so, um, I think that's a big one for sure. Um, kind of, uh, going after every opportunity and as a consequence kind of um the core of our business um suffer so you know um other than that in terms of mistakes um i don't know i think that's that's the big one for us um yeah <laughs> so the totally opposite things about the wins any situation uh, during those certain years uh, when you can say, well, it was the, like a luck stuff, uh, like kind of unexpected uh, things happen and that, you know, lead to the increase of the sales and stuff like that. Like any, 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 any like unexpected wins that you can recognize? 
man. Um, I'm sure. I mean, I look at, at the end of the day, I consider myself a, a super lucky person. You know, things just a lot of times just fall into our laps. I can't really think of anything right now other than, you know, what we've already mentioned. Thought that was going to happen. Um, you know, when this whole thing ha started happening, um, you know, we had our concerns. You know, we had a all hands meeting, and you know, I explained to our entire team, we're like, you know, we're going into an unprecedented time, and you know, you should expect possible interruptions in the business, and you know, we'll take it day by day, and who knows what's going to happen. You know, I was I was trying to prepare our entire team for um, what could possibly be a really big downturn for us, right? The the complete opposite happened, <laughs> not just the opposite, but like, you know, a, a complete 180 to that. And we went from being, you know, preparing for the worst to like really trying to just keep our, uh, our heads above water. So, you know, that's, that's really the standout in terms of um, luck, super recent, obviously. And so, um, yeah. So let's imagine you're standing in front of the students, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, right? And they, they want to run, they want to start like their own e-commerce business right now. Sure. What's, what's, what you would tell them? Like the, like three things from uh, Jacqueline, you know, like what, how they can dive into this water, you know, into the e-commerce. Yeah. Um... You know, I think for one is find a niche that you can do well in, right? And when I, what I mean by that is don't try to sell everything, right? You know, where obviously Amazon has done really well, but, you know, where a super small fish, if you try to do everything, you're not going to do anything, right? And so um, – focus on one particular thing and try to kind of narrow it down to, um, you know, something specific. Like for example, with us, you know, obviously we started out in um, the bicycle industry and, you know, we still, we still do a lot of bicycles obviously, but you know, we wanted to niche down and really specialize. And so that's why we got into the motorized bike specifically industry. Right. And then, so, um, you know, do what you know, um, don't try to be too broad with your product offering. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's one. The other one is, um, uh, you know, like I mentioned the shiny, shiny light syndrome. Don't try to go after everything that has an opportunity. Um, perfect example right now is, um, I see a lot of businesses starting to get into the PPE products, right? Like the face masks and, um, I see so many Facebook ads. It's crazy. Um, of new companies that are selling, you know, the, the N95 masks and like the regular masks and the gloves and all that other stuff right now. And don't get me wrong. It's a huge opportunity. Obviously demand has spiked, you know, thousands percent. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to realize that there's a lot of, there's a lot of business people out in um, the world, right? If you have, if you think you're going to get, you're going to be at the ground floor of it, you may be, but you're up for a lot of competition, right? So, um, you know, really, really consider, is this going to be a fad product or is it, are you going to go into it the long term, right? Um, it's, you know, I actually have a friend of mine that um, helps, uh amazon businesses um on the logistical side right and then so what he does is he he helps um the import process fba centers um and it's it's so interesting um a lot of these sellers that he helps they use a program called jungle scout right um i haven't used it i haven't really looked into it but my understanding is jungle scout like kind of helps a lot of folks find new products to sell, whether that be on Amazon or their website and whatnot, right? But um, what's interesting is a lot of people use these kind of programs, right? And so what he sees on in his business is, you know, there'll, there'll be a certain category, like let's say, for example, I think, I think it was last year, I don't know if you remember, 
in in your area, but there was uh, like fidget spinners were really popular. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know why it was crazy, right? <laughs> so fidget spinners is a perfect example of that. Um, you know, he was telling me he said it was so funny because um, it was so funny because it, out of nowhere he would have ten separate clients bringing in the exact same products, right? Whether it's fidget spinners or whatever. Um, and what would end up happening was every single one of these businesses, they would use, they found these products from, you know, things like Jungle Scout and, or the next fad, whether that be like PP products or whatever. Right. So, um, he would see like 10 plus clients bring in the exact same products at the same time. And inevitably time, time after time, what would end up happening is obviously the market gets flooded and it just kind of goes away. Right. And those are, so if I were to give like one bit of advice is like really, really think about the product itself. Right. Um, don't go after the fad products. Like there, it may be really lucrative, but it will be lucrative for a very short amount of time. Right. And the huge risk in that is, you know, you'll devote a lot of money obviously into inventory that may be, where the, the floor just falls out underneath you or, um, or worse is you're spending a ton of time in the, into a product that just isn't going to last long term, Right. So, um, I think that's it. That's, I, was that three? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least, at least that's a, uh, that's a fair comment. Listen, like the last question that I have, maybe I should really ask that, uh, beforehand, but, uh, you just mentioned about these programs with, you know, what products to sell, etc. Uh, I'm getting a lot of people right now who is trying to sell like, uh, like a video or like a courses, how to do like a drop shipping correctly on Amazon. What's your opinion about all this drop shipping thing? Do you think it's real those days? I think the heyday of drop shipping is for the most part gone. You know, I'm a firm believer in that if a business is too easy to get into, it's not a long-term play, right? Because if it's easy for you, it's going to be easy for everybody else, right? And then so it may work for a certain, a certain period, but like I said, if you, you want to always plan for the long-term, right? So it may work. Um, it's, it's definitely harder now doing dropship only. Um, but you know, there are certain opportunities out there in different markets, but for the most part, I, I feel like the heyday of dropship only businesses are, um, are for the most part over. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was my, that was my personal question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, right. I mean, it's a great question. A lot, a lot of people don't, you know, it, and it makes a lot of sense, right? It's definitely a good way to get your feet wet in the industry, but, and it's, it, it, that may very well be a good way to, to learn the business, but I don't think it's a good way to make money long-term. Does that make sense? So, you know, it may be a good idea for people that just want to get their feet wet and for the, for the, sake of just learning that's a really that may be a really good option for them um, without investing too much money into it um, and with the plan of actually getting out of drop shipping and you know having their own products or even purchasing from vendors and selling that way but um, you know drop ship the margins are just too little They're, it's just too easy to uh, for competitors to prop up on those Sounds good, man. Like, uh, I know I already wasted about 30 minutes of your time. So I want to thank you so much for being sure. with me, uh, giving all those nice advices and share your story. Uh, I, I really do hope that you keep growing from 22, you know, people to 50 and more. So I will be watching your success and hopefully in, in, in one year, two years, we'll have one more interview. <laughs> yeah, the same, <laughs> the, good. The, 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 the same, the same nice haircut, <laughs> but just more, but more, more, more and more being involved from your side, you know, more business. Yeah, definitely. Away. Look forward to it. I've always appreciated working with you. So 
No problem at all. Definitely appreciate all the, the time that you put into our business and helping us along the way too. So um, thanks all around. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. All right. Of course. Have a good, have a good day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Paul. See you Bye -bye. later.